Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Tax in 10 with me, Rachel D'Souza and Andrew Robbins. We're both tax partners in RSM's London office and have a wealth of experience in dealing with a wide range of private client matters. Your feedback is valuable to us, so do keep it coming, especially if you have thoughts on any topics you would like us to cover. Please contact us by email and our email addresses are at the bottom of your screen. So, Rachel, I was approached recently by an intermediary whose client is looking at buying a high end London property to live in. So not very unusual. But what was unusual and what made my contact curious is why his client was also being offered the chance to buy half a dozen rental properties in Newcastle as part of the same deal. So can you explain to me when I'm buying a 20 million pound London house, why would I also want to buy 500,000 pound flats? Oh, Andrew, you're so naive. Of course, I can explain this elementary deal to you. It all comes down to stamp duty land tax. As you know, the highest residential rate is 15% if we ignore any of those supplementary rates. And by acquiring multiple dwellings at the same time, the SDLT rate is actually averaged across the properties, meaning that ultimately the purchaser pays a far lower rate of SDLT, even though he's acquired six properties. OK, that, and that makes sense. So to think about an example, um, Rather than just buying one house for £10 million, I buy one house for £9.9 .9 million and one house for 100000 So the, the multiple dwellings relief means that you take the average of the two prices. So instead of the, the £9.9 .9 million I paid for one house, I'm treated as buying two for £5 million each. Um, I mean, that doesn't sound very exciting, but I guess what I've done is I've just doubled my available SDLT rate bands. And so basically for every extra property I buy for 100,000, I'm getting 1.4 million of lower SDLT bands. Um, and I think on my maths, basically every, in every case that potentially saves me SDLT of almost £75,000. So if I bought six properties in total, one for £10 million and the other five at 100000 each, I would actually save SDLT of over 350 k Yes, and in that case, you could look at paying commercial rates of SDLT um, as an alternative, and you would do that if it gave you a better overall result. So this can only apply if you buy six properties in total. But if you do that and you buy them for ten and a half million and claim commercial rates of SDLT, you save about a million in tax compared to just buying the house on its own for 10 million. And that's even after you, you know, you take account of the fact that you've paid an extra five hundred and fifty thousand pounds for the additional properties that you have to buy. So you're still more than four hundred thousand pounds better off. OK, that sounds brilliant. So all I need to do to slash my STLT bill is that when I'm buying my £10 million house from you, I, at the same time, I go off and buy five of the most rundown shacks in the country and I, I'm quids in. No, no, no. Hold your horses. It doesn't quite work like that. So firstly, all the purchases have to be linked, which effectively means you have to buy them all from the same vendor. And secondly, there's a holding period. So you need to hold on to all of those properties for at least three years. And if you don't, the relief that you were given is actually clawed back. OK, um, so that suggests that this sort of planning is really something that a seller ought to think about more than a purchaser, because I'd need to put a package together for you to buy in order for it to work. Um, so does that really just mean that this is all kind of an academic discussion because no vendor is actually going to go to that much trouble in the first place? Well, you might think that, but let's go back to the figures. 
if the vendor has six properties worth ten and a half million, they could sell the package for eleven million, you see, and pocket an extra five hundred thousand pounds. Okay. So effectively, that you you do a deal where you split the profit between you. So going on with the example, the purchaser will pay about the same overall for buying the six properties compared to buying the ten million house on on its own. Mm -hmm. So the purchaser has ended up with additional assets worth five hundred thousand pounds, which they can sell in three years' time. And in the immortal words of Hot Chocolate, everyone's a winner, baby. That's no lie. Anyway, <laughs> moving swiftly on. Um, while we're on the subject of multiple dwellings, is it also worth talking about the fact that there have been a lot of cases heard by the first tier tribunal on this subject over recent months? And in particular, is it worth pointing out that, as far as I'm aware, the taxpayer has lost every single one of these, and they all seem to have quite a lot in common. So the sorts of cases we're seeing are typically where property has been purchased as a single home and then it's been argued after the event that part of it would have been capable as being lived in as a separate property so that you could claim the multiple dwellings relief that's right and in some of these cases it's really difficult to imagine how anybody ever thought they would succeed so for example there's an annex that you can only access through the front door of the main house. And that's not a property that I'm going to be buying. And neither is one which doesn't have a kitchen or even a toilet. Your standards are just too high. That's the problem. <laughs> I have also seen the case where the property was turned in, was genuinely turned in to do different properties after purchase. But also there, the court didn't have any problem pointing out that you know, what matters is whether you bought two properties in the first place, not what you plan to do with it at some later date. So I think there's actually an interesting distinction to be drawn here between the, the two sides of the coin. What we're saying, I guess, is that buying multiple properties works for STLT because as the purchaser, you're really buying more than one house and you then hold on to those for three years. Whereas on the other hand, if you really just bought one house and then tried to re-describe the facts in order to claim the relief, the courts are just going to tell you to get lost. Um, so it feels like there is SDLT planning you can do but it needs to happen before the contract is signed and not afterwards. And it needs to be done at least in conjunction with, if not totally by the, the seller. And from what's in it from the purchaser is kind of a slightly longer term play that my five flats in Newcastle could actually genu genuinely you know, create a rental income stream for me. And then in the longer term, I can either hold them for a, a annuity income or I can sell them. But I'm not going to make profit in the short term, but three years plus. There could be some really juicy savings. Absolutely. And I think, you know, when you're looking at these very, very high value properties, it, it doesn't surprise me that that vendors and purchasers will um, work together, if you like, you know, to make this happen. Anyway, what's been keeping your interest in the last few weeks? Right, well, recently I've been watching people fighting in hospitals. Oh. Or at least um, I saw the new Karen Gillam film, Gunpowder Milkshake. Um, you remember Karen Gillam as being Matt Smith's companion in Doctor Who? But again, she was brilliant in the Jumanji movies, which I know we both really enjoyed. So in Gunpowder Milkshake, she's an assassin in a very sort of John Wick stylized way. And the film itself is really good, crunchy, violent fun. It's also actually very feminist. It's all centered around the female characters and female bonding. And Gillam is just terrific, um, really good at the physical stuff. She's also a really natural comedian. So 
thoroughly recommended gunpowder milkshake and it's available on sky cinema perfect that's one for the christmas holidays then thank you for listening um, as always, you can contact us on rachel.dsouza at rsmuk.com or andrew.robbins at rsmuk.com. Bye for now. Bye.